Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, so welcome everyone to um, this time's um, e-museum seminar. So first I want to uh, say a uh, special thank you to uh, Xiaoying today because uh, I have this sudden requirement for very short notice. Uh, she's uh, kind enough to agree giving us deliver this lecture for us today. So thank you very much. Um, so um, it's my pleasure to welcome today's speaker, Dr. Uh, Dai Xiaoyun from Yale. So <clears throat> Xiaoyun actually currently is um, still a senior postdoc in Yale School of Medicine, Department of Genetics, but uh, she's about to land on the new journey, uh, becoming de uh, independent um, uh, research group. Um, I'm not going to review where, but sh uh, she's going to definitely land on some somewhere uh, prestigious. So um, Xiaoyun actually uh, uh, completed her um, undergrad study in Sichuan uh, Agriculture University, and then uh, continued with her uh, math study uh, in Sichuan University. So after she completed master degree in cell biology, she decided to uh, continue her uh, pursuit to pursue her PhD uh, PhD thesis in National University of Singapore in pharmacology. Uh, from uh, 2012, um, after she completed her uh, PhD uh, study, Xiaoying moved to US, um, uh, actually uh, getting to Yale University, start her uh, postdoc study in uh, genetics uh, with um, Dr. Chen Sidi, who's also a previous uh, speaker on our, our museum. Um, Xiaoying actually uh, mainly is uh, focusing, studying how using uh, genetic tools to uh, to work on human uh, CAR T cells, she actually become very very productive during her uh, postdoc training, uh, generate uh, several high profile um, uh, publications, and as I said, mainly uh, focusing um, using genetic tools like AAB or uh, CRISPR to editing CAR T cells and then uh, potentially use it as a approach for the human disease uh, treatment. Uh, with uh, her uh, very productive um, postdoc tra training, she uh, get new, uh, numerous different awards. Um, uh, particular highlight with uh, Charles uh, Riven Senior po uh, Fellowship in Biomedical Sciences in uh, Yale, uh, Yale School of, uh, of Medicine. Um, I think today, um, Xiaoying is going to talk about her uh, very recent study um, on the CAR T cells uh, engineered by CRISPR. Uh, and then potentially in, in the human disease uh, treatment. So I think without further ado, um, please go ahead. Welcome to a museum seminar. So uh, welcome, and we're looking forward to your talk, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Prof. For uh, the very beautiful introduction and the invitation to giving this presentation on the immune Zoom seminar. So yeah, uh, hi everyone. So, um, my name is uh, Xiaoyun Dai, and from Yale School of Medicine. So uh, and the uh, Prof. Will introduce. I'm now the, the postdoc working in City Trans Lab. So today it's my great honor to give you this presentation, and I want to share with you my whole postdoc work is uh, how to better engineering the human primary T cells with uh, CRISPR. And I hope this talk is uh, helpful for your research, especially for the people who have an interest in uh, primary cell gene editing. So uh, let's start. In this talk, uh, uh, there are two parts. The first part, I would like to talk about the new technology we have developed in 2019 to generate the modular CAR T cell in one step by using the uh, AAVCP phone system. And the second, I will talk about the massive parallel knock-in platform based on this uh, AAVCP phone system, and which enable us to precisely lock in the transgene in human primary T cell in massive parallel manner. So, okay, let's uh, start with the, the first one. Um, so T cell is one of the most important immune cell in our body. It not only protect us from the virus or the bacteria infection, but it's also uh, to reconquer the cancer cell to kill them. So there's the one uh, examples I want to show you. So you can see this uh, purple, the tiny T cell is able to detect this giant ovarian cancer cell and destroy it very fast. So, and uh, what scientists are uh, interested in is trying to take use of the, this uh, T cell ability to fight with the cancer. So here in this slide, first, I want to briefly show you the development of the CAR T cell therapy. 
So in 1960, the scientist Eva and George Kelvin have found um, that there is a one kind of the cytotoxic cells from the mice spleen and the bone marrow is able to protect mice from the cancer. And the 26 years later, and the Prof. Rosenberg is the first time to uh, use uh, the uh, cancer infiltration lymphocyte to be used for the cancer treatment. So what is the mechanism underlying of the, this, the uh, this phenomenon? So the scientists found that uh, this recognition is dependent on the T cell receptor, so which recognize the, the um, peptide MHC complex and then active T cell to ki kill the targeting cancer cell. So one of the uh, exciting idea in 1993 was based on this uh, TCR structure. So the prof channelers use the chimeric the single chains of the antibody binding domain to instead of this uh, TCR extracellular domain. So this engineer, the T cell, was redirected to recognize the, the cancer cell. And uh, this behavior is independent of the MHC molecule. So this is uh, the first generation of the CAR-T. And the, um, with the deep understanding uh, of the T cell activations mechanism, we know the co-stimulator is very important for the T cell activation, such as the CD28 and the 41 bb So when we design the second generation of the car, so we add this uh, essential so co-stimulator intracellular domain into this uh, car structure. So this is our second generation car and uh, it's first be approved by the FDA in 2017. So now there are totally have the six uh, uh, generation type of the CAR-T product have been approved by FDA, including the four CAR-T product targeting the CD19 molecules on um, B-cell type malignancy, and the two um, CAR-T product targeting the BCMA molecules uh, for in the multiple melanoma. So and the result for this uh, certain type of the cancer is uh, really remarkable. And the current CAR-T cells are patient immune cells taken out from the uh, human blood. And then we, we first use the beat to active this T cell and uh, genetically modify them. So, and uh, they are currently modified with a recombinant viral vector, such as uh, 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 lentivirus or retrovirus. And this virus help us to insert the CAR transgene into the lung target site in the genome of those uh, T cell and that directs the T cell to against the targeting cancer cell. And this genetically modified the T cells will be uh, expand in vitro for um, 10 to 14 days and be reinfused back to the patient. So this is the, the um, traditional method to manufacturing the CAR T cells. So um, these achievements are very exciting, but why we still uh, need to make better CAR T cells? So this slide uh, shows sort of five aspects that I think are really important to address the current CAR uh, cell therapy problem. So the overall point here is that there are multiple problems that we have to uh, that have to be solved. So there is just no simple fix. So on this diagram, for example, in red, um, you can see this uh, the tumor recognition is the ability of the T cell to recognize the tumor and discriminate against uh, with the normal tissue. So, but in many cases now, um, the target we use uh, a tumor or social allergens is or the overexpressed allergen, like the HER2 uh, and the CEA, for example. But uh, these uh, allergens are also expressed at the uh, lower level in normal tissue. And it can lead a, a very serious cross the reaction and have a serious uh, toxic side effect. So, and uh, we also need to improve in, in orange. Is that we have to try to get the cells trapped into the tumor. Um, in many cases of the uh, current uh, uh, Sony tumor cell therapy, uh, tumor limited the CAR T uh, cell penetration and the result in the uh, failures of the treatment. And another issues in yellow is that we have to increase the, the CAR T cells proliferation and the persistence. So it's very important to have a durable response and uh, prevent the disease relapse. And then uh, in purple, um, many tumors have a, a immunosuppressive microenvironment and that can and suppress or um, deepen the immune response. So we have to figure out ways to overcome this. 
either by uh, making the cell resistant to this or helping the cells uh, actively remodeling this uh, uh, microenvironment. And the finally, so we need to have the better control of this T cell. Um, because the CAR T cell can secrete a lot of the molecules called the cytokine and the chemokine, they will lead to the cytokine release syndrome or the immune effector cell associate, the neurotoxic syndrome. So we want, sometimes we want to put some bricks or the suicide switch into the T cell to control the uh, side effects. So um, to overcome this uh, challenge, and a lot of scientists devote themselves in this uh, research area. So here, I, I simply classify the uh, current gene editing strategy into major type based on the gene modifications uh, method. So one is the gene knockout, and the, the scientists are trying to lock out some uh, endogenous gene to prevent some bad effects, such as uh, uh, target driven uh, self-killing, we call it a patricide effect. So, so we can lock out the CD5 and the CD7 to prevent this effect. Or they are trying to lock out some uh, uh, donors uh, specific molecule like the uh, TCR or the MHC related gene, the B2M to prevent the graph, graph versus uh, host effect, which can be used to uh, generate uh, off the shelf CAR-T and so more patients can benefit from this uh, cell therapy. And uh, some scientists are trying to look out some immune checkpoint receptor like the PD-1 or the LAX3 to prevent the T cell exhaustion or look out some transcriptional factor like the K2 or, uh, or the NR4A to increase the T cell anti-tumor activity. And, uh, and another important strategy is the, the to try to um, do the transgene overexpression so they are trying to use the lenti virus to overexpress some uh, synthetic the, uh, gene or the natural or the cytokine, chemokine, uh, or the antibody to help the CAR T traffic, in, traffic into the solid tumor or increase their anti-tumor activity or help them to overcome the tumor uh, immunosuppressive microenvironment. So, but overall, all these uh, strategies uh, only introduce a single or the small number of modification and the time. So next, how do we move this uh, forward? As I mentioned, there is a no simple fix to overcome this uh, challenge. So in order to fully realize the, the, this potential, the possible we need to combine this gene editing strategy together but uh, this is a really a very big technical challenge in primary cell gene editing. Mm, because the T cell have a limited uh, lifetime and it have an innate immune system to exclude the foreign materials. So um, back to six years ago, so, uh, uh, this was the, the Ben Sims when I started to start my postal work. So, and we think about this, it's kind of, kind of like of the uh, car manufacturing. So we cannot uh, build a car just by one screwdriver. We need to um, we need a more powerful tool like this uh, uh, robot hand, uh, which enable us to more efficiently and precisely add a lot of different parts into the car. So I'm wondering so how to how do we move the immune cell engineering to this kind of a state? So could we uh, develop a more flexible genome editing tools beyond just a lock out one gene? or random insert one transgene into the T cell genome. So um, CRISPR have given us the, the basis to do this in an extraordinary powerful way. It allows us to pick up the very uh, specific site uh, in the genome and the rewrite the DNA sequence. So for example, we can use the, the base editing to fix the individual mutation in some rare disease and uh, we are able to reprogram T cell by removing uh, or the activate the gene at the specific site. Or we also can add the new DNA sequence to install a new gene program and the defined site in the genome. Mm, so over the past number of years, mm, I was thinking on how to better apply the CRISPR in, uh, system into the human primary immune cells. 
So here we developed a new technology which was able to generate the modular CAR T cells in one step. We call this the system and the AVCPF1 Kiko system. KI means the lock in, KO means lock out. So um, this word means this platform not only allow us to very efficiently lock out multiple genes, but also the precisely uh, insert multiple DNA into the specific site in human immune cell. Um, so here's, I want to briefly show you how this uh, system work. So um, when considering what I what, what uh, I want to do the, is a multiple multiplex gene engineering. So the CRISPR enzyme uh, we use in this system is the, the CPF1 nucleus instead of the common use uh, SPK line because the CPF1 has an intrinsic uh, RNA activity so which allow us doing the multiple gene knockout um, by using a single CRI array. And uh, we found uh, the CPF1 mRNA can be electrified into the primary T cell very efficiently and uh, with a very low toxicity. So uh, after electrification, the CPF1 mRNA can be translated into the uh, CPF1 protein and located into the uh, nucleus. And after electrification for four hours, uh, we add the reconstruct the AV6 vector. And this AV vector have a two important components. One is the, the uh, long transgene, which is flagged by the two HDR arm. And it can be used as a HDR template to help us insert the, this the long transgene into the specific, specific locus. And the second important um, component is the CRI array. And this array can be cleaved by the CPF1 protein. And it not only have the guideline RNA uh, targeting the uh, HDR locus, but also have the one or two more guideline RNA to generate the additional gene knockout. Therefore, so by using this uh, AVCPF1 um, Kiko system, we are able to do the multiple gene knocking and the multiple transgene knockout in one step. So we perform a series of experiments to test the efficiency of the, this uh, Kiko system. So let's uh, take a look at the, the result. So first of all, in order to match towards to clinical applications, so we design uh, uh, two guide RNA. One guide RNA is targeting the track locus, uh, which have been identified by the um, Michelle uh, Standling lab that the track locking CAR-T could enable the uh, enhance the tumor rejection. And another guide RNA is targeting the well known immune checkpoint re receptor. PTCD1 to prevent the T cell exhaustion. And uh, from this uh, lectera result, we can see that the Kiko achieved uh, um, around more than 80% lockout in track locus. And uh, more strikingly, the second guideline uh, targeting the PTCD1 also have the more than 80% lockout. So, and uh, we also test a bunch of the other uh, uh, guide RNA and all this uh, guide RNA have a similar effect. So therefore, uh, this data indicates that the AVCPF1 can mediate the high efficiency uh, if multi multiplex genome editing in T cells. And next, um, beyond doing the multiplex gene knockout, we also want to test uh, whether Kiko could uh, add the lung DNA cascades into the specific Side. So we put the CAR transgene combined with the, the track HDR arm into this uh, AV vector. And we hope this transgene can be integrated to the track locus by the HDR. So from this uh, facts result, we can see that the CD3, uh, the CD3 elective uh, population means the track lockout. So there are more than 70% uh, 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 track lockout and uh, 45 the uh, car lock in into this uh, primary T cells and they five. And another uh, amazing thing is uh, the positive the car percentage uh, was increased if we culture this uh, T cell longer. So the, this is because the, the AV is much more stable than the lentivirus. It can last for a long time in cells. So even though it don't have the integration ability.
So now besides uh, of, uh, introducing the car transgene into a human T cell, and the scientists also try to add the additional transgene into these uh, cells, such as uh, uh, double car uh, or the antibody or the cytokine to improve the CAR T anti-tumor activity. So um, taking advantage of the modularity of this KIKO system, we further use the two uh, different uh, uh, AV victory with the different HDR arms to test the double locked in efficiency. So based on this spec result and the right side, we saw a very high double locked in efficiencies happen in the day five. And all this data indicated that the uh, Kiko system are able to achieve the high multiple gene locking and the lockout in human primary T cell. And uh, um, this uh, technology potentially have a broad application for example, it can be broadly used as a research tools uh, in T-cell engineering. Also can be used as uh, to manufacturing the off-the-shelf CAR-T or lockout uh, the double or triple gene. And uh, in principle, it also can be uh, used on the other primary cells such as the uh, uh, IPSC, NK cell and macrophage. And uh, because the, the precise uh, locking ability of the Kiko, we also can use it to rewiring the signal pathway of the um, primary cell to investigate the gene regulatory work. And the second part I'm gonna focus on today is based on this AV CPFL system. So we, uh, uh, which, uh, we develop a new platform which allow us to do the massive paranex uh, now lock in in human primary T cell. And uh, this paper has been accepted by the Nature Biotechnology and will be online soon. So um, we start to think about uh, how we design an ideal CAR-T to overcome the current uh, challenge in cell uh, therapy. So what's the target profile of the cell therapies we would like to have will be more effective. So as I mentioned in previous slides, there are a lot of challenges we want to overcome to improve the CAR-T cell therapy. So such as we like to increase the uh, cell proliferation and persistence. We like to be more effective uh, and clearing the tumors. So, and so, um, and we think about this is uh, how, how do we rapidly find out this uh, potential target? So now sometimes uh, we can get hypothesis from the literature. So, but, uh, but there's still so much what we want to fundamentally discover about is uh, the genetic program that control immune cell and we can start to engineering around. So that we have been inspired by the power of the CRISPR screen. So CRISPR screen are a very powerful tool to unbiasedly interrogate gene function in, uh, immune, uh, in cells. So um, until, um, but uh, um, for if we want to apply the CRISPR in the primary T cell, it's very challenging because we know the case line is a very big protein. If the lentil virus have a bigger cargo, it would have a lower transduction efficiency. So until now, there are uh, four platforms to perform the CRISPR screen on human primary T cell, including the SLICE, SWAP guide, CRISPR activation system and the fruit lock-in system. So for the first three uh, systems, they are using the lentil virus to deliver the uh, SGRA library into the uh, T cell and then introduce the, the caseline protein by electrocution or use the lentil virus again. Um, however, the whole procedures only can lock out one gene and it also cannot prevent the uh, lentivirus introduced uh, random, random gene mutation. Mm. And a larger strategy is by using the long viral gene editing based uh, fraud screen. So which was uh, performed by using the fraud, uh, fraud synthesized double strand DNA or the single strand DNA and template and combined with the caseline RNP and this system enable us to lock in food library into the specific site and only can do the screen in small scale. And it also can only can do one modifications at one time. And another limitation is the DNA electrification is very toxic for the uh, primary T cell, which, which is the limited the application of this uh, food lock in screen method. 
So to overcome this uh, shortage, and we are also wondering that how do we introduce a large number of uh, mutation into a human primary T cell and the plus current uh, modification strategy. So as we think about the, this, we came to realize uh, that the Kiko system is a very highly uh, flexible system. It's the, not only able to uh, modify genome in multiple fashion, but it also allows us to introduce a large number of uh, mutation into human primary T cell. So based, uh, based on our uh, Kiko system, we further modify this uh, AV vector by putting the HDR arm in front of the U6 promoter. So which not only allow us to add the chest gene cascade into uh, this uh, into this uh, defined site, but we're also able to introduce large number of the guide RNA into this T cell by HDR. So taking advantage of mutations that we are introduced into the population, so we are able to pull out individual cells that have a phenotype of interest and identify this target by doing a guide RNA readout. So for simplicity, we call this platform as a, a clash. Um, so we, we start to test uh, this platform and uh, apply this platform to solve some clinical problems. So first of all, uh, we design a new CPF1 library. We call it Discatis. This library uh, include around 8,000 CRE RNA targeting the 154 immune gene. This gene are involved in the T cell co simulation, T cell exhaustion, T cell preparation, and so on. So, after we clone this library into the cache AV vector, we first use the Sanger sequencing and the next generation sequencing to verify it. And from this uh, Sanger sequencing result, we can see that there are some mixed signals showing up in the uh, Discati library plasmid and the Discati library's CATI cell. So, so it uh, suggests that we have successfully locked in lock the library into the plasmid and locked in the library into the T cells and the track lockers. Mm, for the CRISPR screen, the high coverage uh, of the library in starting pool is very important. And we have to make sure there isn't too much sky RNA dropping out at the beginning. So uh, next, we also use the next generation sequencing uh, to check the library coverage. And uh, the, this result shows that the library coverage of this uh, engineering CAR T cell is more than uh, 97%. Mm -hmm. So when we have these uh, innovative tools uh, in hand, in series, we, uh, we could test uh, any different phenotype of interest. But uh, uh, we want to ask a question is uh, how can we quickly apply them to solve the, some clinical problems? So currently, Persistent uh, of the CAR T cell is a big issue for both the liquid tumors and the solid tumors, which is the important index uh, to predict the CAR T cell therapeutic uh, uh, outcomes. So, from these figures, you can see the patient CAR T population was uh, uh, decreased dramatically after infusion for three months, and the patient response is uh, correlated, correlated with the CAR transgene levels after infusion. So therefore, if we can increase the uh, CAR T persistence and the possible the patient would have a longer durable response. And the T cell exhaustion during this process is because of the continuous antigen stimulation. So we want to establish a model to mimic this process. And uh, basically what we do is we repeat the challenge uh, this uh, engineered cutting cells with the uh, targeting cancer cell and a very low ET ratio. And with the continuous antigen simulation, uh, this T cell will start to differentiation and uh, gradually lose the, the preparation and the effector function, such as the uh, uh, cytokine production and the uh, cytotoxicity. So the cells uh, with a long persistence ability will lost, but the cell with a longer persistence will finally survive in this uh, co-culture system. And for each round, uh, we collect the fraction of the cell genomic DNA for deep sequencing and uh, analyze uh, the guide RNA enrichment. So first, let, let's take a look at uh, this uh, screen phenotype. So 
this uh, experiment were done on different CD8 and the CD4 TCL donors. And the end time point, we stand the memory relative markers such as the CCR7, CD62L, and the CD45RO. So as you can see here, the both the CD8 and the CD4 vector cut uh, cell have differentiated into the effector uh, memory type. But surprisingly, the both CD8 and the CD4 uh, clash library group uh, showing the common selection towards the T-central memory phenotype. So it suggests that the some um, mutation in this pooled population drive the T cell to seem cell like the uh, property and help CAR T to live longer in this uh, co culture system. So we collect the genomic DNA of the, this CAR T cell and did the like, gener generation sequencing to find out which gene perturbation helps the CAR T live longer. Um, so let's uh, move on and uh, take a look at uh, this uh, deep sequencing data. And here, so please uh, keep in mind that uh, our screen is uh, not just a simple two time point model or the two simple compare reasons. Uh, so with its selection in a time series uh, and uh, the current common use algorithm such as uh, uh, Rider and Magic is uh, not perfect for us. Uh, therefore, we develop a compromised uh, linear model. We call it the uh, SEMBA. This model allows us to take all factors into account and uh, quantitatively assess the guideline performance in all time points. So let's uh, take a look at this uh, two plot. So we got a, a bunch of the significant enriched gene in this uh, CD8 and CD4 clash experiment. And among this uh, uh, top hit, I want to highlight the two shared uh, top hit is the T2 and the PRDM1. T2 can be used as our positive control in this uh, screen because the T2 is the only one gene have been verified by the Kajun lab that the disruption in CAR T can improve the therapeutic efficacy in cancer patients. And another potential interesting target is the transcriptional factor PRDM1 um, which play an important role in regulation of the T-cell differentiation and also showing up in this uh, CD8 and the CD4 clash screen. So we know this uh, uh, long-term co-culture system is good to mimic the in vivo uh, T-cell exhaustion in cancer patients, but uh, it still cannot fully recapture uh, all the in vivo suppressive effects on CAR T-cell. So next, uh, what we do is that we try to adapt in this clash to, uh, to the in vivo cancer model and find out the potential target to improve the CAR T cell persistence in vivo. So we inject the uh, leukemia cells into the mice first and then infuse the discard library CAR T cell pools back to the, this mice and collect the organs and the different time point. So the bottom left panel shows the Absolutely, uh, absolute, absolute the CAR T cell number in spleen and the bone marrow. So you can see here, so in early time, the selection between the control and the library group is not very significant. So, but the, in the day 14, uh, the CAR T library group significantly increased the CAR T persistence. And the, this data is suggesting that the some of the mutation help the CAR T to survive longer in this leukemia model. And uh, from this end, uh, time po end time point uh, block plot, we interestingly found that the PRM1 showing again. Um, CRISPR screen is the first step to help us to find out the potential interesting target. Um, after finding out this gene and the validate them is uh, more important. Because uh, I have to say there are some caveats in CRISPR screen. For example, the difference of guide RNA cutting efficiency possible uh, result in different phenotypes. So in order to help us to narrow down the target gene list, we try to identify the shared gene in this uh, three screen and then test uh, this candidate gene one by one. And uh, there are many factors influence the, the T cell persistence such as uh, the T cell exhaustion and the T cell tolerance and so on. So here I want to show you two of the most important determinants affecting the CAR T persistence. One is the T cell stimulus 
and the other one is the T cell preparation ability. So we test the, the memory uh, marker depression and the self preparation on this uh, shared top hit. And we found disruption uh, of most of the top hit could increase the steam cell like uh, steam like uh, steam cell like property and the cell preparation ability. And uh, this data further support the, the powerful of the clash selection. And uh, based on the robust performance of the PRM1 in clash screen and the preliminary validation equipment. So next, what we want to do is we want to fully explore the potential of the PRM1 to be used as a therapeutic target. So um, we test the PRM1 mutant cutting effect on the multiple preclinical mouse model. The first one is the, the leukemia model. So I have to say the result is uh, very, really very clean because we test the PRM1 mutant uh, cutting effect by using the two different types of cutting including the anti-CD19 and the anti-CD22 car. Um, so the results were remarkably reproducible. Uh, and you can see here, there are these are two tumor growth curves. The PRM1 mutant uh, group have a much better tumor control uh, behavior than Victor Cati group. And the, the CAR T therapy effect is very remarkable in certain type of the liquid cancer, but another major concern is uh, how can we improve its uh, therapeutic effect on solid tumor model and the more solid tumor patient can benefit from this uh, new type of the immunotherapy. So next, we want to push on this and uh, test whether PRDM mutant CAR T can achieve if, uh, efficient and long-term remission in solid tumor model. So we generate the uh, track locking HER2 card by using the clash vector. So we use the HER2, uh, HER2 colon cancer cell line to establish the two different sonic tumor models. For the first one is the tumor growth model. We treat mice uh, uh, by using the two different dose. We found that the lower dose of the vector, uh, Victor CAR-T group have lost the tumor control's uh, ability in this uh, little graph model. Um, but uh, the, uh, the lower dose of the PRM1 mutant CAR-T cell still could have the great uh, tumor control ability and the prolonged uh, prolong, uh, prolong the median survival. Another interesting, interesting result is that the PRM1 mutant CAR-T uh, was also able to efficiently prevent relapse in the re-challenge the colon cancer mouse model. So from this pie chart, you can see four out of the six mice relapsed in the Victor CAR-T group and only uh, one mice relapsed in the PRM1 mutant CAR-T group after re-challenged with the, the can cancer cell. So this in vivo's findings further, further demonstrated the super anti-tumor activity and the longer term protection of the PRD1 mutant CAR T cells in stony tumor. So to further characterize this uh, PRD1 mutant CAR T phenotype in this uh, stony tumor model, so we set up uh, a larger perineal experiment and the uh, set mice and different time points. So we examined, we examined the number of the infiltration CAR T cell and the number of the um, cancer cell in tumor. We very excitedly found that the PRM1 uh, mutant CAR T group definitely have more CAR T cell infiltrate into the tumor and this uh, two different time points. And the PRM1 mutant CAR T group also have the less cancer cell comparing with the uh, vector group. And more importantly, the survived PRM1 CAR T cells exhibit the higher steam like the property. And uh, we suppose this is the one of the most important reasons why the PRM1 mutant CAR T have a longer persistence comparing with the Victor CAR T. Um, this uh, study was uh, focusing on the human um, primary T cell, especially for the CAR T cell. Uh, and we have uh, demonstrated the feasibility of the clash for doing the massive perineal lock-in. But actually the, uh, the clash uh, based uh, pulled lock-in screen is not limited by the CRISPR library to have a, a broad application. So here, uh, I want to further explain the implications of the clash. 
the clash vectors have the three important uh, components. The first one is create an array um, targeting the different gene. Second one is a long transgene class A, and the third one is HDR arm. All these the three um, components is uh, changeable. For example, we have changed this uh, create two to our CRISPR library, and then we can do the CRISPR screening. Um, but, uh, and, uh, but we also can fix the, this uh, guide RNA and uh, lock in the transgene pool into the T cell. And this transgene pool can be changed to anything what we want to do. For example, we can do the uh, large patient the TCR repertoire, the lock in, and we also can change it to the any synthetic the gene fragment pools. And in, in addition, we also can change this uh, HDR arm. Uh, we can look at the, the transgene into the different desired size. So in this way, we can test the, the endogenous promoter effect and the transcriptional uh, factor effect on regulation of our um, transgene equation. And besides of the individual investigate of these uh, variables, we also can do the random compilation of these uh, variables, which will generate a large scale of the variance and the benefit for us to rapidly find, the, find out the best one according to our desired phenotype. So I do believe this uh, useful and a very powerful toolkit will allow us to do the multiple dimensional the locking screening in future and uh, rapidly find out the better CAR-T or the TCRT for the cancer patient. Uh, and in principle, it can be applied to many other cell types such as the other immune cell, stem cell, primary cell, or the cell from other species. So at the, the end of my presentation, I would like to thank my mentor, City Chen's support and the guidance and all my colleagues that help in these uh, two projects. I would like to thank my uh, great collaborator, Dr. Junkun Nai and uh, Dr. Sarah Slavov. Uh, and I, I, finally, I would like to thank my postdoc fellowship uh, funding source, Chubb uh, Reference Foundation. And uh, thank you all for pay attention. And now I'm happy to answer all the questions. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>